Thomas Odom. Round the ice hole. Thank you, thank you. I'm John. This is Corey. We're your uh, hosts. We're joined this episode by Eleanor Savage, uh, program director of the Jerome Foundation. Um, here at the uh, Medicine Lake Black Box Theater Shanty, part of the Arts Shanty Projects 2009. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, can we offer you a beer? Uh, sure. John? Excellent. Sure, what the heck? Yeah. Bonus. <laughs> Bonus. Um, so, uh, so you, you're just right. so the, the 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 talk show. We explain a little bit. We talk to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we make up songs, and then like the through line. It's an ice fishing talk show yes. because we we're actually ice fishing. Um, yeah. How's the, uh, how's the fishing going? It's been a bit of a slow day ice fishing here on Medicine Lake. Uh, we're 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 set up at any moment. Uh, oh, check out you see we've there, got yeah. some big old uh, sucker minnows on there. Wow. Uh, so we are wow. set. We've got some tip ups here, so a very large fish could come by at any moment. And at the flag, if the flag tips up, uh -huh. let us know. If you're in the audience, if you see the flag go up, we've got another one going on here. Let us know. We'll stop. Doesn't matter how what are we talking about. <laughs> we'll stop. stop for the fish. We'll stop. But it's not a total loss. If you could reach behind, there's a yellow box back there. Um, <coughs> these are some fish we caught earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Shanty, you looking around at them? I, I just like the whole concept. It's really foreign to me. I grew up in Georgia, so we don't have ice except in the freezer, and uh, definitely no ice fishing. <laughs> <laughs> the lakes never freeze. So it's a whole uh, new phenomenon. So as the uh, as the program director of the Drone Foundation, you're sort of like you're sort of like on the the pulse of it. You're sort of defining and and, and identifying and deciding like what is like emerging art happening in Minnesota and New York? I think being around creative people is just, it's a great way to, to live. A great um, energy to be around. Fun. Like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> mm. We're a fun guy. <laughs> like mushrooms. Fun guy. Fun guy. <laughs> we make things up. That's right. We make things up. Like songs. And if the things aren't good, then they get cut. <laughs> From the repertoire. From the repertoire. If it's not worth it, let it go. Yeah, which, I mean, and, and a lot of art groups are doing that. <laughs> um, these days, sort of letting go, like, the the inessentials because, every, you know, the downturn, the economy, and grants getting tighter, and, like, uh, really honing in on the essentials. Um, is the is the drone funding been pulling back with some of its, uh, its funding or prioritizing? The foundation lost a third of its endowment in six months. Um, so what the board decided to do is to keep funding the organizations that are already being funded and to stop giving out new new grants to new organizations mm -hmm. until things start mm -hmm. building back up. But not some places that have reshifted their priorities to like, you know, we're gonna fund this different thing to like reflect the economy, it's just <coughs> just it's not less. New ones. Yeah. 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 Still emerging artists. Just less emerging. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there, yeah. So, how, how do we get into the subject of? I, I mentioned that, that what's been on my mind, uh, uh, not mentioned now in the talk show, but pre pre previous to the talk show, sort of been on my mind the juxtaposition of hope and despair mm -hmm. that's going on right now, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and sort of what the what the roles, the impact of the arts is. Like, like on that now? I grew up in a pretty rural community. Um, I didn't grow up with the kind of way that a lot of people live. Um, you know, I grew up in a, in a household with four generations under the same roof. Um, mm -hmm. And no one, you know, Granny wasn't getting sent to the nursing home. She was like cared for in the home. Kids were cared for in the home by, you know, 
-hmm. the older generations because mom and grandma were working. Um, and, you know, my grandmother was recycling and composting um, then, you know, and this was 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it was just the way that you lived. You, she grew up in the Depression, so um, she carried that kind of, you know, every piece of tin foil is a something mm -hmm. that you have to <laughs> hold on to for as long as possible. Um, resourcefulness, and I, I think that somehow we got lost in this idea of a service economy that, you know, if you need something, you go out and buy it, as opposed to you have to have the skills and resources to do it yourself. Um, I, th I was thinking, you know, it'd be really fun to, in a theatrical setting, to just, you know, close doors and say, okay, life as we know it is over, so what skills do we have in, this, in the room mm -hmm. to live? You know, is there anyone who knows how to grow food? Um, anyone who knows how to preserve food? Um, uh, medicine, you know, anyone who knows how to, like, care for one another? Like, there's a lot of things about how to live that I feel like a lot of people don't have in their, you know, re in their bag of tricks, in their, in their resources that they right. can pull out of a hat and say, okay, well, I know how to grow something if I had to. I could do it. Or I know how to hunt or fish um, or make tater tots. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I think we need to get back to that kind of level of resourcefulness and skills for, mm -hmm. for living and but taking yeah, care of Wait, it might be important to remember mm -hmm. how to do things without a cell phone and a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, a grocery store. You yeah. know, it's like just in, the, in my family, my grandmother... You know, she grew and canned, you mm -hmm. know, everything. She made her own clothes. Mm -hmm. My my mother, if it doesn't come out of a the frozen food section, she's not going to cook it or eat it. Um, <laughs> you know, she was visiting a, a few years back, and it was you know, holiday time. And I'm like, oh, let's get some broccoli. And she's like, you're going to get, like, real fresh broccoli? <laughs> like, yeah, she's like, it's going to take so long. <laughs> oh, sad. Um, so just in one generation's time, mm -hmm. fortunately for me, I, you know, learned from my grandmother some of the skills because otherwise it would be two generations removed mm -hmm. from what yes. you were talking about, the skills. Right. So, yeah, I think we really need to, like, wake up Mm -hmm. so before we, you know, forget how to build the cathedrals right. and the pyramids and the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Make moonshine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's the still? The sausage is good and spicy. Um, so, uh, in the through line today's show, uh, Earlier, we had on an, an evolutionary biologist who was really he was studying the, the, the color patterns in birds, but at the same time, he's also an evolutionary biologist. We could ask other questions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But as like the biology of like the the cultural arts shifts and the changes we're going through, do you see uh, do you see any any arts practices that are evolving out, like uh, that generational shift? Yeah, I don't know. On the good or bad side, like stuff that stuff that we're gonna miss because like people are stopping doing it, or stuff that was like, great, finally it's like evolving past that. What's anything evolving out? There's some things I hope would evolve out. <laughs> like that's that, relevant too, sure. Naturalistic yeah. theater. You know, I was at a show the other day. It was a very traditional play, and very naturalistic, and they were trying to do southern accents, and I was like, you know, film can do this so much better. <laughs> and I, I'm so much more appreciative and excited by performance work that is immediate and what is happening on stage is, is what is happening. Mm -hmm. Not pretending that we're, you know, in antebellum Virginia and, uh, you know, we fake our way through that. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I would hope that would be an, an anachronism that evolves out. <laughs> but. 
That makes it. Is that, is that what you're speaking of as nationalistic theater? Or that's what they're naturalistic. 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 naturalistic, not nationalistic. No. That's just me putting my own filter yeah. onto it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, John, would you like to sing us out on a song oh, yeah, with yeah. us? Maybe uh, with a southern accent? Mm-hmm. Yeah, do it. Um. Well, I'm feeling twangy and jingly jangly. I'm in a fishing house, but I wish I was in a summer kitchen. <laughs> I've got a bad accent, and I got some good soup, and I'm gonna sing this little song for you. All right. right. Thank you. Eleanor Savage has been our guest here for the last episode of Round Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the black label.